It is Talking Reds, it's Neil Atkinson with Craig Hannon, you've heard of him. And on today's show we're going to talk about uh, the young players we're looking forward to seeing on the Liverpool's tour next season. We know other things are happening, do feel free to mention whatever you want within the comments as we go all the way through. I've got them up here as well. Uh, but one of the things that is happening is that uh, Pep Linders has, um, has written a book with I'm, James Carroll, it's exciting isn't it? I'm really excited about this. Like I love a book that like goes behind the curtain mm. and I feel like you can't go any more behind. He might be the curtain. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's as close to being in Klopp's mind, and and he's in those. Uh, he's in every meeting with him. He's planning these games. The, everything about it sounds sounds exciting. Because usually with these books, as a journalist having to talk to the people to understand what's happened in the middle, you're not going to get the full sort of like the 360 view of it. You are with Pep Linders. You are indeed. I think one of the things I like. Firstly, I like the cover. Have you seen the cover? I haven't seen it. Oh, I've seen the cover. Is it, it Pep Linders? Looking really intense. Yes. Really, really, really what's intense. What's the name of the Intensity. Yeah. So it's Brilliant. like a Frederick Forsyth novel. <laughs> He's looking really intense. Like it's like an airport paperback. Like yeah. it wouldn't surprise me. Like on page two hundred and fifty, he's involved in some sort of gun chase. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, from nowhere. Um, genuine, like full, straight down the battle. <laughs> This is one intense man. You want to know about our identity is intensity. The cover of our book is intensity. The title of our book is intensity. This is intensity, ladies and gentlemen. Brilliant. If we get to interview about the book, I'm just going to get him to continue. I'm going to say, can you pull your most intense face? <laughs> I, I mean, I'd love a pint with him. I'd love the interview to be a pint. I think it'd be a brilliant pint. I think he'd, he'd, have, he'd have so much to say. You'd, uh, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd learn a lot from him, but you'd, you'd hear a lot from him. And I think um, he's just a nice fella, I think. And he's, and he's obviously switched on. Like the words that, that Jurgen Klopp has said in the foreword of the book, are like you know are pretty incredible in terms of how studious he is and how much he's learned and 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 how much he has to give to the game so to be able to get a little bit of piece of that and, and understand exactly the, the the personalities that we think we know yeah. that we see on the YouTube channel and we see on the videos and all of that we think that they're a, they're a great set of lads and then we'll get to see really what they're like uh, how they all work and and what pre-seasons are like and so on and so on I think he loves Liverpool yeah 100%, 100%. I, I think it's a dead interesting sort of one where it's he's turned up and he's become part of this thing, and he's completely gone, yes, this is where I want to do the thing that I do. Yeah. And that's what I think is dead interesting and really exciting. And that's why, you know, within the intensity thing and the jokes, that's the stuff that I really, really like in there. Yeah, and he's been promoted at every at every turn, hasn't he? And obviously there's a, I think there's a six month period where he goes off to Holland, I think it was, to, to try his hand at management. But, you know, when that doesn't work out, instantly Liverpool is straight on, do you want to come back? And and, and there he is, you know, high up in the first team. and. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited that, and, and, and I'm glad that James Carl's writing it as well because um, he's great and he's also one that's behind the curtain quite often with his, you know, you see him going out to Mykonos to, to interview Salah, you know, he's there in all of these moments almost as, a, as an onlooker and as a, um, well, as a journalist uh, and that's, that's, I can't think of two better people to write this book. It's exciting. Yeah, really. I, I never yet. get excited about books, by the way. Got, 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 got more book chat than I've ever heard. Can uh, we get a copy before we go on tour here? I know it's not out until August, but like, if you can, someone could sort something. Pep, Pep watches these sometimes, Pep, apparently. If you can do us a favour. Um, in the middle of s when you're doing some intensity, if you can just break off and do some post. That would be brilliant. <laughs> if, I mean, if you want to try and do the post in an intense way, you're more than welcome to do so. Intensity is, after all, our identity. Uh, but also, it would be great to get an advanced copy of the book before we come out on tour. Uh, are you looking forward to the tour? I did a thing, by the way. Um, I did a thing, by the way, where I said, what did you want us to talk about on, on, on the old Talking Reds uh, today? And some people um, came back to me. Nico to Forest being one thing. Uh, looks as though that's happening for 16 million quid. It's a really feels good like it, Yeah, feels like it works for everyone, I think. Win for everyone. Yep, Hope absolutely. he does really well. Yep, me too. Uh, really want to see Forrest finish above Everton next season. Um, <laughs> and if Nico can, can contribute to that, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, absolutely, uh, always. Yep. Uh, wing backs on both sides, it looks like. Uh, Steve Cooper's going for there. And if Nico's one of them, four or five big goals, including one at Goodison Park, you know you, you know you can do it, Nico. You'll do for <laughs> me, mate. You will do it for me. Uh, someone said, can we talk about the Fantasy Premier League game? Uh, not here. I I am not a player. I want no. I, I I want to talk about it because there's a thing that the fantasy Premier League game does that drives me to distraction, and it's the way it classifies certain players as oh, midfielders. Oh, a midfielder. Yes. Everyone's a fucking midfielder. <laughs> and it's turning. <laughs> oh, I'm doing the wrong. So is, is that the, the, so? I've just got the run of the first ten midfielders, and it is number one, <laughs> Mohamed Salah. <laughs> yeah. What a midfielder he is. Never played midfield in his fucking life. Uh, you ask Mohamed Salah to play midfield, he tells you to go fuck yourself. No idea how to play midfield. Uh, number two, to be fair, is the best midfielder on the planet, Big Kev De Bruyne. Yep. Uh, top red. Um, <coughs> sleeps with uh, an Anfield wrap pillowcase. Yeah, he the does. duvet case yeah, on it. Yeah, we've been yeah. told that. Yeah, uh, he's, got, he's got a Kenny Dog leash dog lead. Yeah, uh, by him. Yeah, genuinely, yeah. He's got, the, he's, got, he's got three or four bits of merch. 
uh, that he wears all the time. But the generically branded stuff, not the specific stuff around plays. He doesn't want to embarrass himself. It would have been better if you had picked merch that we were selling. We're not selling uh, those merch anymore. I'm going to sell that one anymore. No. That, that one there. Oh, we maybe are. Yeah, that one there. Yeah. Uh, Saying the If you could buy that one, that'd be great. That the dog one lead. The Kenny dog lead. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. It was great, wasn't it? it. Uh, yes, yeah, so we could do that if you wanted to. Um, I mean, we could do anything on merch, really. <laughs> also, come and see us live in London on Saturday whilst we're plugging things. Uh, so, live in London at Earth in Hackney on Saturday, do come down. Excited? Uh, yes, and nervous. Uh, but then I'm always nervous before live shows, as yeah, often discussed. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to. Um, just very quickly, Dan Austin's coming, so we're going to have a bit of a chat about Paris before yeah. the sort of the show proper starts. Yeah. So, you know, I want, want, want people to, you know, look forward to that. So Dan's going to come. That would be brilliant. I'm going to get stuck into that. So anyway, Mohamed Salah won, Big Kev De Bruyne two. <laughs> Son, number three. <laughs> yeah. Was he fucking played centre mid? Do you know what I mean? Was he been a midfielder? Absolutely no way on earth. Number four, Raheem Sterling. Number five, Bruno Fernandes, who I think will actually be used as a forward this season as alarm on a technicality. Jared Bowen. Still low. Yeah. Right wing. <laughs> right side of forwards, West Ham's top scorer. Saka. Great player, not a midfielder. At this rate, there's only going to be there'll be like three number nines you can choose: Haaland, oh. Chris Wood, yeah. and uh, and Nunes. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. it. Honestly, it drives me mad. Luis Diaz is in here. I think Diaz is a bit more of a midfielder than than uh, than, than the Mane. Mares, Defo, not a midfielder. Uh, Kulovevsky, not a midfielder. Sancho, not a midfielder. <laughs> Wilfred fucking Zaha <laughs> is a midfielder. So we'll talk about fantasy <laughs> Premier League when they sort this out. Uh, until then, uh, we are going to remain on a bit of a what the, what is going on over there with these people uh, position, and we will go from there. It's just not for me. Every time I pick a team and then end the season with like three fellas still playing in centre midfield who have all done their ACLs and everyone laughs at me. Yep. So where's the fun in that, Neil? Where is the fun in that? There's, there's, some, there's some contentious stuff around the table. Uh, the table's not going anywhere, to be honest with you. Look, you think it's going to break? It's not going to break. It'll never break. It'll never break. You get the karate kids himself in to come and do that. We've and tried. When Neil's upstairs, we have tried. Yeah, this table, this table will outlive us all. Uh, <laughs> like cockroaches. And uh, well, up until yesterday, Boris Johnson. Um, so we are going on the tour. Yeah. Are you excited for the tour? I'm really excited. I love it. Um, talked about seeing behind the curtain. It's one of the the rare instances that we get to do that, really. Um, you get to watch the open training sessions. You get to see what's happening in terms of the the the, the intensity that, that Linders is talking about. And and it's always dead interesting with the young players that they, they, they bring up either from the 18s to 20, the 23s they are, uh, to, to give opportunities. And also the young players that are coming back that you want to see sort of, well, A, have developed a bit more and, and, and look as if they can make an impact within the team. But um, yeah, I can't, I can't wait. It's fact, normally in, in normally Thailand as well. well what's, not, what's interesting, I think, is that normally this is the point where they've done things in a different order. So in seasons gone by, they'll do around this sort of time. They'll begin to do your Tranmere away yes. uh, and Blackpool away, maybe in a couple of them, and then you get to go to them, and it is an even younger crop. We're not getting that. There's no other pre-season games, so I think the young players who will feature in these games, on the whole, are the ones who are, who are really, really rather close yeah. to the first team, yeah, yeah. the first team squads. The one I'm dead interested in seeing. In all seriousness, it's not a joke. Seeing how he's developed since he's been out on loan, because he's not gone back out on loan yet, is Seth Vandenberg. Yeah. Because he was playing at times right wing back for Preston, and, and you know, listen, I saw him play centre half for us, and I would never even at the Championship no. have thought that lad's a right wing back. No. But I just wonder if he's really been able to come on leaps and bounds with his football, with his awareness, with even just the use of his body and the growth of his body, because it really will be like seeing someone you've not seen for about eighteen months, Vandenberg. He's a really interesting footballer in that he's got like 50, 60 appearances in the, in the championship now. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and he's played for the under 21s at Holland as well. So he's, you know, he's, he's developed really, really well. He was one that, like, at times, whenever I saw him play for us in the League Cup, and even uh, we're talking about open training sessions, the last time we were on tour was his first. It was 2019, and that was his first summer at Liverpool. And he was in the training session. I was just watching him thinking, mm, not sure about this. And I was like, that's, that's really unfair because he's a young player. He just arrived. Um, but even in the performances in the League Cup, uh, in the 1920 season, I just wasn't. I wasn't looking at him and thinking he's definitely a Liverpool player. But you know, I, I quietly like the the step up from the Championship. Like yeah. I, I'm, I'm really excited about Fabio Cavallo, for instance, and what he's been able to do. I've seen what Harvey Elliott's done in the past, and then how he's been able to step up. Um, could be a future. The fact that he's not gone out on loan yet means I think they want to have a look at him. 
Do you think so? I, I think th- so. I, I'm, I'm intrigued by that because I suspect if you were him, I'd probably want to go out on loan. There's talk today. Oh, I, know yeah. Phil- I know Phillips doesn't fall into the young player category, but he is pretty eager to move on himself. And I think that that'll be the aim. I think they'll just want to see at what level he is now in comparison to whenever he's playing against Mo Salah yeah. instead of someone in the championship. Um, so I think they'll just want to have a look look at him. The fact that you know they've they've I mean they've sent out Beck already as well, and he every time he's played at fullback, I thought he's looked like really really composed. You know, there's something about him. Bradley, obviously, we at times last season he's already gone out on loan Big Nat Phelps is back by the way yeah I know he's back uh, until he goes until, well, I think he's got to go and I hope he goes in a yeah. permanent sort yeah, of yeah. move I think Vandenberg might be a little bit different and if there's a future for him the idea that he can do stuff the size of football that he is at right back and at right wing back makes me think he could be able to be at some point a ball player and centre half mm. at a Premier League level again there's a massive difference in the Premier League level and on us level players who we think are at an us level or could be at an us level next one is Ramsey you know, I'm intrigued to see him when we all get to go away. We, we will obviously get time seeing him in the flesh in person. We know, we know we're lucky to do that. You know, we will get to see what we will be one way or another as Liverpool debut. Yeah, and again, having having had a season in, in, in the SPL as well, um, I think, I'll, you know, I'll have, I'll have done him wonders, really. I just, I don't think, I think we'll see him on the tour, but I just don't think we'll see much of him. I think I think they'll play Gomez there, for instance, if there's any problems with Trent. I, I don't, we might see him in the League Cup, but I, I still think that development's going to be slow. Um, and it's interesting, his attributes, I know you did a stat show on him, uh, which I didn't watch, and I'm sorry, so I'm it's interested okay. to hear your, your point of view on him, but whenever you're, is the, I mean, his delivery looks phenomenal, and he looks as if he can play with both feet. He's about really, progressions really and well. creativity as much as anything else. I think that did want him to kick on. It's worth saying he was playing for a team that came 10th hmm. last season in the SPL, and 10th is just, you know, it's a 12 team league, and he came 10th. So the idea of being able to be an explosive fullback in a side that, firstly, you know, is not at the top yeah. of its powers yeah. is difficult, I think. So he, he didn't really profile very well up against Nico, but Nico was playing for the best team in the championship and the most attacking team in the championship yeah. at the same time. Yeah. But one of the things about him was deep progression, set piece deliveries, uh, both feet, like you say. Yeah. The very fact that he was taking so many corners and free kicks for Aberdeen at the age he is. I mean, we all know how football teams work. The idea that the 18 year old's getting put on the, the best corners. Fella. Yeah. yeah, it just doesn't quite seem quite, you know, it's like it's an argument until he starts taking some belters and then they go, all right, yeah, you've won this one. So now I'm excited to see him in that context. I agree with you. I think the first. I think he's one of the ones who's, who's slightly undermined by the fact that there isn't an AFL Cup game until November. Mm. Um, and he, he might be aided, though, on the other hand, by additional time, sort of uh, through substitutions, if he can get on the bench. But even with nine subs, we saw last year there were Liverpool players not making benches. Yeah. So yeah. I think we can say, oh, could he get off the bench? But ultimately, Joe, the one Joe Gomez on the bench, and the idea, I think, will be Gomez will cover Trent at right yeah. back if yeah, there's yeah. an injury, or you just want to get Trent off, you might do Gomez for a bit in there as well. Um, one I'm obviously excited by because I think we, we didn't get to see the best of him over the course of last season and he's pre-seasons really well, two pre-seasons back-to-backs Elliot. I think he, he just looks like he, in a really weird way, he loves building relationships I think with other footballers and call footballers like that but with Elliot it feels even more like yeah. he loves Pretty working nice. out how, yeah. be, how well to play with players. I'm really looking forward to seeing him too. Yeah, me too. Um, I, I want I want an explosion from him. That's what I want. I want I want performances in against United next week, uh, against uh, Palace, isn't it? We're playing as well uh, in Singapore. I yep. think it is. Um, I want him to really announce himself because I feel like he, he comes back from the injury, gets the goal, and we're all like, hell. You know, we're going to see a lot of Elliot um, at different times over the next five months. He's going to there's going to be big moments from him. Uh, he scores a penalty in the League Cup final, which you know is is a big moment in itself. Holds a flare up, uh, having won the League Cup final, which is a moment in itself. But I think, you know, following the Inter game, I think now. And it feels mad to say this about a, a, an 18, 19 year old player. I think we just really want a big preseason from him to be able to go, right, he is going to be one of the, the, the 13, 14 key players in this in this team next season. I'm really excited about Curtis Jones. I like the idea that, um, I mean, I love marketing and I love the marketing of himself over, over the summer where he's saying, look at all the work I'm doing. Look yeah. at, you know, uh, the rest of the lads are in Ibiza, not me, lad. I'm in Dubai doing, uh, you know, fucking doggies. Um, and I think that's, that that's, the, the, the mindset of a footballer that, that knows it's a huge season yeah. for him in terms of being able to go from that um, you know squad player at Liverpool who has all of the potential to, to really you know enforce himself within this team and I think he can do that he's only 21 we're talking about young players here Curtis Jones is still only 21 and yet he's achieved so much at Liverpool uh, yep and the last one uh, for me is Kate Gordon 
I'm really excited about Kate Gordon in general. I think you got to see, for instance, in key moments last season, some quality finishing. The yeah. Shrewsbury game in a really weird way. You know, he scores the goal to make it 1-1. You yeah. go on and win the game 4-1, but he scores the goal to make it 1-1. Yeah. And yeah. I think that they're important goals in football matches. He shows all the composure in the world. He plays that game away at Arsenal, starts there, doesn't disgrace himself, gets a couple of other appearances. I think I don't think he can kick on as such, but what I think he can do is he can back Salah up. I think he's one who might find it a little bit easier to get a pathway to a place on the bench if it's the idea of in certain games, listen, we think we're only going to use Mo for 60 in this one. Wouldn't it be nice if we were able to give Gordon the other 30? Yeah, the five subs will be massive for players like him, I think. Um, it's easy to forget that he starts that game um, away against Arsenal in the League Cup semi. And I was at that game and I remember... I mean, it didn't bat an eyelid at the time, yep. um, which shows sort of how highly he's thought of uh, as And then you'd sort of play, you'd sort of play against Shrews, because exactly. you were like, well, he'll be fine this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also it just shows like the, the confidence that, that, that the manager has in him that in such a big game. And at that time in the season, it's, it's easy to forget like the feeling around that time of the season. It was pre-Diaz. We were 12 you know, points behind City. Exactly. We'd drawn nil-nil with Arsenal in the, in, in the first leg. So it's, it's easy to forget like how big that game felt at the time. And Keir Gordon's playing, uh, uh, you know, on, on, on the wide position. And I think that's that just goes to show how sort of um, you know how much they feel of, uh, about him. But you no, know, I'm really really excited. I love a little goal from him. I'm not going to get too carried away. I remember uh, again we talked the last preseason where Brewster was banging them in, and yeah. I was and I was getting dead excited about him. And um, but it just looks as if he's got he's got something special, doesn't he? Um, and whether we see that this season or whether we don't, you know, the the idea that we've got so many of these young players now that we're talking about that that aren't just they aren't just you know they aren't just possibilities they're like you're looking at Gordon, Carvalho and Elliot and thinking they will play for Liverpool in a few years time uh, on a regular basis. Okay uh, other little bits and pieces stuff that's come through in your comments in there uh, there is a question on Luke Goodwin says any friendlies back in Liverpool after the tour yes on the 31st of July uh, Liverpool are playing um, who is it? I've got Strasbourg. 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 Okay. Um, that's excellent stuff. Well done, by the way. Very impressed. Yeah, the, the, uh, I, I like it. Basically, I, I saw when it was announced that they were doing kids for free, uh, and I like all of that kind of thing because it's easy to forget. Like the, you know, they're going off on these tours, and kids get access to to, to players are able to go to to watch these teams, and um, it's good that they're they're thinking right. Well, what can we do for the local kids as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, completely agree with that. Uh, Rachel Furness plays tonight uh, for Northern Ireland uh, in Euro. I just looked at you there, Euro 2022. Um, I'm struggling for excitement around the Euros, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, not in, a, not in a, a moody way, just in a fucking hell international football Jesus way. Uh, I've got tickets for some games though, so I'm going to go to a couple when we yeah. get back from the tour. And maybe by then it'll have sorted. But I think I need to hit the knockouts, do you know what I mean? I, th I think I think we're all I think as Liverpool fans this month we've all just felt as if we've needed we've needed certain things to pick us up and the Nunes the transfer picks us up a little bit but you're like I'm still all right with there being no football and then the Salah contract happened and I was yeah. like oh here we go yeah. like I'm I'm ready now um, and I think you know for still a lot of people it'll feel like the preseason games are coming around too soon but um, I think as we see the new players and, and all of that we'll get excited by again and it, that's sort of my feeling around the the the, the, the Euros here is that I'm I'm just a bit like. Maybe I'm not ready just yet. Yeah, uh, maybe it's just come a week or two too early to filter into the rest of our football lives. But Rachel Furness hasn't got a choice. She's got to play tonight. Uh, and I'm sure she will be the absolute business. Do tune in. Do enjoy. It is meant to be a celebration of lots and lots and lots of things all together. Uh, and uh, what else was I going to say? I did have something else, but it's completely gone out of my mind. Uh, obviously, coming up, there is all the other friendlies. There is obviously the Community Shield as well at Leicester City uh, for reasons that supposedly they're the only shite. team. Well, they're the only team who've been for it. I was with Dave Mooney. I saw Dave Mooney uh -huh. yesterday afternoon. I was with Dave Mooney yesterday afternoon and he was like, this, 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 this charity shield's in no time. And I said, mate, you don't have to tell me that, it's ridiculous. <laughs> the, 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 the club's got a clock, a ticking clock down to this friendly against United. It's in five days, three hours, 28 minutes and 22 seconds. <laughs> which, which feels so <laughs> oppressive. If someone could have a word, we've just been really nice. James Carroll, we've been dead sound about you on this. If you can have a word and get them not to do that, that'd be the absolute business. <laughs> uh, anything else going on? Oh, yes, indeed. There is obviously what's going on with the rest of the country, the rest of the nation. As a whole, we know that obviously. Obviously, that's not what we're necessarily here to do. Uh, but I just want to quote a tweet uh, that I've always liked from about last November uh, by someone on Twitter who was called Mr. Underscore Considerate. He says this, and this will be the end of Talking Reds. English politics can be best understood as a conspiracy to ensure that the Conservative Unionist Party, no matter how momentarily unpopular, wayward or destructive, is always valid. That's Talking Reds.